Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Certainly my pleasure to be here uh, to help celebrate Dennis's life while he's still alive and with us, and we can talk about him in front of him to his face, so we can hear all those jokes right now, and hopefully he can laugh at some of them. I had uh, the opportunity to first meet Dennis as a young employee uh, when I worked at CKLW Radio, and I was promoted, uh, promotion, but promoted, so to speak, uh, to be the marine reporter, and Dennis was the captain of the Labatt Blue Marine Cruiser. Yeah. And I, well, yeah, first mate is here, and I know the cruise director is over there. We had quite a crew, and I know many of the folks here I haven't seen for about 20 years have been coming up saying hello as well. They were all folks I met on the boat. So I, I showed up to the boat one day not knowing Dennis and being a little nervous as a 17-year-old, as a but I would have to spend every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from May to October with this strange guy trapped on his boat in the middle of Lake St. Clair. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, but as I approached the boat and first saw Dennis, I realized that you were old enough to be my father. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then when he stood up, I realized it was impossible. <laughs> So from the moment I stepped aboard that 32-foot brew, we became fast friends, Dennis and I. And that one summer in 1990 rolled into four consecutive summers aboard uh, the very hard, very laborious work on Dennis's boat, reporting on the size of the waves and, of course, the water temperature off of Belle Isle. I was there uh, before he married Julie, and I listened to him gush loving comments about her and saw his true excitement uh, when he was able to marry her. I was around when Julie and, uh, and Dennis had little Dennis, and I saw how proud Dennis was to have a son. And I listened to his many stories about Shannon, and how proud uh, he was of Shannon and all of her accomplishments at that time. Uh, over the weekends, in the evening, when we weren't uh, reporting, I was able to see many of uh, Brand X performances where Dennis, Kenny, and Steve created some of the best local entertainment that Essex County has to offer. In short, every weekend for four years involved Dennis and Drew in some way. That's right. That's right. It was a great time, a happy time. It was lots of excitement. There was lots of energy. We had a few fantastic adventures, as I recall. Really some of the best years of my life, which I think you should have uh, when you're in university. And a lot of those were created, and those experiences and memories were created uh, because of you, Dennis. And what I saw was Dennis living. And I saw Dennis loving to the fullest, a good husband, a good father, and a good friend to many. And we continued, Dennis and I, to stay in touch after the radio days, although it became a little less frequent as I was beginning to start my career and you, Dennis, were beginning to contemplate retirement. And Dennis is the one friend that I had who we could talk probably once or twice a year and we could get caught up in about 15 minutes and never miss a beat. So in 2004, I started a company called Border Health Incorporated. And this business was created to arrange cross-border medical treatment for those who couldn't get timely treatment in Canada. And I had arranged a meeting with the doctor uh, who operated a full body uh, scan machine. And so uh, during our meeting, I asked him if he'd show me the technology. He pulled up a profile and drove me through the 3D picture of a patient whose uh, uh, colon, he, whose colon had cancer. And the cancer he described to me as very advanced. It's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> and so the, the doctor happened to mention that the patient was a Canadian. And I glanced at the top corner of the screen and to my shock, I saw the name Dennis C. Solat. Now, I admired you, Dennis, before I knew this information. Uh, but from this point of the story forward is where your life has most impressed me and many others who were in the room. You may have gone through the normal stages people go through when diagnosed with cancer. Uh, but for most of us looking in from the outside, you chose to fight a six-month death certificate. 
You didn't sit back and wait for cancer to take you. You took on cancer. And in so doing, you left an indelible legacy of hope, of caring, and passion for life. Whether it was your motorcycle ride across Canada to raise money for cancer initiatives, or your musical serenade to those fighting the disease, or your motivational can surviving tour, where you showed others how a six month death sentence can turn into an 11 year journey of hope and inspiration. You, my friend, gave more than you received, and that really is the hallmark of a great man. You have done all of this with the same enthusiasm and positive outlook that I remember on the first day that I met you. And that was nearly 25 years ago. And I know you're a musician, so I tried to find that one Beatles song or that one song that made sense here. And I found a Beatles song. And it's the song that said, in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. So let today, when I look out at this audience here, be a shining example of the love that surrounds you, Dennis, for all that you've done to help and inspire others in your life. Thank you. The highest honor that I can bestow as mayor of the city is reserved for those who have made great contributions to our community. Those who have lived as selfless citizens. Those who have loved and inspired others in the community to do better. And those who have chosen to create a legacy that will live long past their time on this earth. You, my friend, are more than worthy of this recognition. So it gives me great pride to present you, Dennis, with the key to the city of Windsor.